Hello and welcome to another super professional episode of the Super Professional Podcast where we're finding super professional new data friends. And this week we have Christina with us. Christina, how are you doing? Hello. And who are you? <laughs> so I keep hearing you ask these questions in the, inter in the interviews and I'm like, oh, that's a very existential question. Wow. I'm not sure how to answer that. But uh, take a shot at it. Uh, data architect, uh, though I've been involved in data for 20 plus years, trying not to date myself too much here, uh, with various titles ranging from DBA, data manager, business and uh, BI engineer, etc. Um, right now, data architect. I am a neurodiverse person. I don't, I, so I've been, uh, I don't want to use the word prescribed, um, diagnosed, thank you, um, with, with one, but there's a high likelihood with, with more that I just haven't bothered with. Oh, and there's my husband. I'm in an interview. <laughs> <laughs> more friends. You have an extra guest. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, speaker, blogger, finder, outer of things, love puzzles. Um, can't really be described by any one thing because I'm constantly changing what I'm into, which kind of falls back to that neurodiverse thing. Awesome. I'm seeing parallels so, to our last week's guest um, because Carol also <laughs> told us, depending on which week we ask her, um, she's kind of into different favorite um, things, which gets us to our next. But also, fun fact, I have now waved at Christina's entire family because I also waved at Christina's kids during a previous call. So oh, that's now, funny. now that's I know funny. your family. How nice you is do. that? You do. You <laughs> do. At least the ones that live in the house, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, y Yes. <laughs> We, it we would be a bit weird otherwise, Ben. <laughs> I mean. I'm not putting it past you. I'm just saying it could be weird. Very true. Very true. I, I, I've done, Sue would be like, I'll say hi to him. Where is he? <laughs> I've done more weird in my past. and we'll yeah, have, we know. We'll have done more weird in my future. Thank you, Jess. <laughs> that, that, I want to say that, that suit for sequel bits was pretty on fire. So. <laughs> No it's very I'm already working on my outfit for the next sequel bits. I can't yes. wait. Can't wait. But I mean, I, I got almost a year to go, so it will be fine. Uh, anyways, if you've been working for 20 ish years in the data field in all kinds of different roles, plus you're having different favorites all the time, depending on what you're currently into, um, that might be a non trivial question, but. That's what we're known for, asking non sure. This is us. We're asking the questions others aren't afraid to ask. Um, oh, no, that doesn't make any sense. Anyways, what's your favorite data thing? So um, it's funny because I like I saw the, the interview, a couple of the videos, the others, and all of a sudden I got like, oh, favorites. I don't do favorites because back to the neurodiverse thing, it changes constantly. Um, so when I thought about this question, I was thinking, well, it's not really a specific thing like synopsis or data warehousing, um, but I do really have a passion for like healthcare related data projects. Um, I think we can make major differences in the world with healthcare data. So that that's kind of my passion, no matter what tool I may be using um, to develop things or investigate things. Um, I just, I really, really have a passion for that. Um, but that doesn't mean you necessarily have to be doing something in the healthcare data field at the moment, right? So right now I'm not, um, but what I've learned over time is that actually by doing things kind of outside of that, you can bring more ideas of solutioning um, to, to healthcare data. So that, that's a little bit of my, my passion projects. That's super cool. I think you're the first person who has chosen like a data like a type of data rather than like a specific tool, which is cool. That's it. I like the way you took that question. Thanks. Yeah. It, when I was thinking about it, I was like, oh, no, it just depends on which week you're talking about. <laughs> it changes constantly. I mean, since you love being asked about favorites so much, let me add a unplanned, unscripted follow-up. Uh-oh. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> I got to pay attention. Focus. Okay. <laughs> Focus. A word that I regularly hear on this podcast, usually it's either aimed at me or Jess, so um, <laughs> there yeah. we go. You fit in well. It's perfect. <laughs> Welcome to the team. 
Could you think of a, or do you remember any specific project around healthcare data that especially, or that potentially made you laugh or, or appreciate healthcare data that much? Yeah, actually I do. So um, many years ago, I worked for a consulting company that did uh, uh, specifically worked in the healthcare data field for um, both US and uh, international. And we did a project um, with Nigeria um, and a few other places that basically um, at the end of the close of the project, we handed it over to their government um, and said, here you go. And uh, I spoke with somebody later on it and they told me that because of our, our work, we were actually, they were actually going to be able to pinpoint when um, a pregnant woman with HIV at, at what point she had to um, start medications so that her unborn child did not have HIV. And that was oh, determined wow. by like getting all this data, basically. Um, they, we were able to do a lot of work with them and um, have over a million records of HIV data to, to draw that from, which is very unusual. Um, so lots of work that they can do with that. And, and that was kind of an eye-opening moment of, oh, wow, I can be an IT and I can make a major difference in the world. And, and that was not something I had like previously kind of thought of, you know, you're doing your job and oh, this is my day to day. And it was, it was a big, like, oh, wow, moment for me. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, you're right. It's hard to see like the bigger picture sometimes when you're just working on your small piece of data or you're keeping your databases online or whatever. Yeah. It's, it's hard to see like the result, which is, that's really cool. Yeah, yeah. What a powerful project too. Yeah, yeah, it was nice. It made me wow. just really Super fall in love with it and be able to do, you know, look at other things and and stuff. So yeah, I think too with like the the way things are going and the more data we're getting around all of these things, like it's cool to think of all the things like that that could change, right? Based on us collecting more data, like we're all wearing these like Garmin smartwatches or whatever that's keeping track of heart rates and temperatures and all this stuff, like yeah. all that data could be used to work out. And I know when, like in the beginning of the pandemic, people were saying like smartwatches were kind of detecting like, okay, you, you haven't tested positive, but you're, some things are off, right? So you could use yeah. all that data for, yeah, super cool. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Salman Khan did a, a, an interesting uh, TED talk, I think recently, or, or, or maybe it wasn't recently, I don't know, um, about like everybody talking about AI and the dangers of AI and, and chat GPT. So I guess it was probably recently because that's what everybody's talking about lately. Um, sure, sure. And it was really interesting because he flipped the script, right? And if, if you're not familiar with him, um, he's got the KhanAcademy.com that does free education and that's his, his passion project. Um, and he, I liked how he flipped the script on it saying like, you know, everybody's thinking about it in a bad perspective, um, but here's how it can do so much good in the world. And I think of that in the, the same realm of like, oh, everybody worries about AI and, and all we, we do constantly talk about the problems and, and, and things that can happen. And it's very scary, particularly for people who don't know about it. Um, mm -hmm. But there's also so much great things, particularly with AI and healthcare data, um, that that it can accomplish um, that we really need to delve into. Yeah, that's awesome. That's a good point. Yeah. Cool. Well, that, <laughs> that is like a, a powerful <laughs> topic, <laughs> isn't it? But that's, uh, no, that would also make it? a fantastic session at any event, by the way. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Oh, good idea. <laughs> Be because I, th I think that's what many people underestimate. Yeah. How much, how much impact some of the data work that we do um, from time. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. And, and that so might be on a micro level or it might be on a um, huge scale, obviously, but yeah. it, it's not always just about, Hey, um, we need to build another PNL. Hey, we need to get another sales report. Uh, hey, get me um, anything from our CRM. Mm-hmm. That's kind of what most people see. Yeah. Plus all the technical issues that come with it. But, and well, obviously, very few stories might be as impactful as what you've just described. What what you what you've been doing there. But still, there there is, but especially on a micro level, there is so much stuff where you can tell great stories. Where like, 
this is what we did. And that is something that people can automatically and easily relate to. So, um, mm -hmm. yeah. It was kind of my hook whenever I interviewed people because they were like, at that company, they're like, what do you like about this company? I'm like, oh, I can make a difference in the world. <laughs> and I was on many projects and, you know, some not, not so, whoa. Mm -hmm. um, but still, it got me information that I could use later on down the road. So it really is every bit that you do can be used at some point. And I think that's, that's important for people to recognize. Yeah, I agree. Awesome. Well, when you're not playing with healthcare data and with these awesome projects, what is your favorite non-data thing to get up to? Um, so besides being with my family, um, it would probably be hanging out with friends, which I don't do quite enough, but would like to, <laughs> and then traveling, which I do occasionally. Um, our family travels, uh, at least once a year, usually internationally, um, and then small, small things here and there. Um, I've been fortunate enough to do that occasionally um, with all three, and that that's probably kind of my 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 perfect scenario to be with family, friends, and traveling all together. Um, that's my nice. ideal thing. Perfect. Is there a favorite location that you've traveled to? Oh. Sorry, another favorite question. I know. Well, I'll give my last answer. I, I haven't thought about it in a while, so I don't know if it's still there. But Portugal, I really love. Mm, nice. I have a coworker in Portugal, and I am desperate to go visit. You get like so many different things in Portugal. Um, one, they have fantastic food and wine that is, um, by normal standards, very low cost. Um, both for Europe and America, you just you get like top of the line wines and seafoods and and all other types of things at just an extremely reasonable price. Um, you get the beach, you get like old architecture, mm -hmm. and just everything's so close that no matter what you have, you can go hiking and you know this wonderful place, or you can hey just hang out at the beach and um, all of it uh, not at an exorbitant cost. So. That's probably why it's one of my favorites right now. Yeah, we may cool. still have to work on our rules here, Jess, because I'm sensing a pattern with our guests um, that don't want to answer a favorite thing and then they just stuff multiple answers into one. I mean, <laughs> so, if had so Elena two one, weeks though, ago right? was like, yeah, I like reading a book in a foreign language while traveling, um, just to give one answer, <laughs> but still give yeah. three. It's so, smart, yeah. though. Family, friends, traveling. I want to travel with my family and friends. This is not how this works, Christina. This is not what we just have, does. and it's fantastic. Okay, fair. Okay, in this case, I'm going to go about it. This so one it's like time. A, a niche thing that is when those three things cross over, that's the favorite. Oh, right? That's the favorite. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Okay. Apparently, I'm over. Well, test. Yeah, your rules don't don't matter. We're changing <laughs> your the rules. Your rules don't apply to my brain. As long My as you can make all matter. of the favorites, all of the favorites in one sentence, that counts as a favorite. So, oh, I'm going to add something in a minute. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> New challenge for future guests: How many favorite things can you get in one sentence, or in one episode? Or you can yeah. always come back and add more favorites if you feel like it. It's, I mean, I guess at this point, rules are overrated. This is energy. Yeah, just throw more in the comments on on our YouTube yes. channel. Please don't. <laughs> I have to approve all these comments. Everybody go a, put a comment. <laughs> he's getting a full-time job. Spoiler alert, I don't have to approve them. They're auto-approved. Oh, boy. That, that's probably what could bad. possibly go wrong? I thought, I thought you were going to whisper, this is my full-time job. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody who has been at AKB knows that I don't have a full-time job after William put me on the spot there. So Exactly. When his first question on the chat was like, oh, there's Ben again, apparently he doesn't have a real job. So I guess he's right. Anyways, Your real job is talking to me. It's perfect. It's a great job. It's the best job in the world. I wouldn't trade it. Exactly. Would you say it's your favorite thing? <laughs> of course. I love great. my job. Today. Perfect. Right at this moment. <laughs> so all that talk about travel and food made me hungry and... As you know, oh, we kind of made it a habit. I'm not going to say kidnap people anymore because I still think kidnapping people has that part of it where we're the lacking content and with people just jumping on the van or the RV, yeah. it, it's lacking that in. element completely. So 
Apparently, we just became a tour operator without knowing it. I have to check if we need That's some fine. kind of license to do that, but uh, I think it should be good since, since we're a nonprofit, basically. You're a nonprofit and kidnapping people. I think that's the wrong <laughs> job. <laughs> kidnapping. It's, it's, fine. it's basically kidnapping without the ransom because that automatically makes it a nonprofit. Ah, true. Or at least a no profit. I don't know if that qualifies oh. for nonprofit. <laughs> but... Or we're Being just really bad at kidnapping. kidnapping. <laughs> 501c there. Or we're really bad at making money. That, that might also be it. True, yeah. true. After kidnapping 70 people, we realized we entirely forgot to ask for ransom. We just released them at the next stop. We were fed very well. However, we kind of asked for ransom because we're hungry. So we're asking you now, what would be your favorite food that we could eat? I'm with you, I'm going to say at this point, because, I mean, apparently this is just a party van anyway. So what are we having oh, for dinner? Party van. Oh, for dinner. Oh, so I or lunch. Totally have the Or lunch. Or brunch. Or... I was just answering favorite food. Um, probably because I was thinking too much about Ree's answer on this question when I listened to her. <laughs> do you have any thoughts or feelings about Ree's answer? I do. Oh, <laughs> let us know. Very strong feelings. So she said Fox Brothers barbecue, and I do like barbecue. Although I will say the only barbecue for me really is ribs um, when I eat it, and I was just so personally offended by her. Fox Brother answer because I don't like Fox Brothers. Um, and Fat Matt's is the definitive best rib choice in Atlanta, FYI. Uh, Good to so know. I just wanted to put that out there. I'm sure you will have comments now from Ray. <laughs> <laughs> but my favorite food, which wouldn't qualify as a meal, I guess, unless you had a fondue place or something, um, is dark chocolate. Hmm. some salt component to it yeah. oh nice sounds like, good yeah so i couldn't really pick a f regular food i guess but i was like oh somebody said you can't have something for the rest of your life i'd be like oh that would be the one that would that would kind of hurt anything else i could be like oh disappointing and bread bread i would make a terrible meal person bread is bread like one of my favorite foods. Bread, bread and butter top of the list yes mm. unless butter. it's cat yeah. killing bread butter is considered a food um which i guess oh it is, is. you can yeah. eat it by itself i have <laughs> in fact i got in trouble a lot as a kid doing that i actually had <laughs> a shirt on a couple of episodes ago or a couple of episodes in the future i don't know that said bread and butter on it it would have been perfect yeah my mom used to find in the butter thing like my finger thing <laughs> Stolen it all the time. And but, it really upset my stomach. So it was weird that I did it, but it's, it's just so delicious. Hard. Yeah. Mm. It is. I once I can totally it. go with bread and butter. I can totally go with dark chocolate. Plus, I'm I'm not did did we have anybody coming up with something sweet, dessert like yet so far? Just I don't think so. Perfect. I don't think we have. No, you're right. I think so far it was all savory. So all Yeah. I think this is a meal. Bread and butter followed by a little Chocolate. Dessert chocolate? Yeah, I think we're good. Honestly, this is a set menu. <laughs> yeah. This, this is sure. fine dining. Mm. Only, I am actually only hungry the top now. I'm of the go line European time. butter would do, right? Oh, yeah. For sure. Nice. Or Wisconsin yeah. butter. Wisconsin might be. They've got some well, pretty decent butter. Ah, uh, Amish butter. They do that good in the US. But yeah. you're right, yeah. Select butters in the US for sure. Yeah. In the aftermath, we should have named these episodes like they did with the with the Friends show. So this would be the one with the bread and butter. Oh, yeah. Smart. <laughs> Dark chocolate. We're too far in now. Uh, we can't go back. back. No. I no. do want to specify not milk chocolate, only dark chocolate. That I mean, I'll noted. eat milk chocolate if it's the only thing available, but yeah. <laughs> if you're forced. Awesome. No, well, especially think... since you added that salty component to it, um, mm. yeah. I'm game. Oh, yeah. I'm in. Yeah. One of my favorite chocolates is um, it's using it's it's not actually a chocolate bar, but it's more like a, a chocolate spread. So you can also put it on the bread, um, just without the butter, please. And Smart. we're not going to have that discussion if butter goes under anything chocolatey. The answer is no. Definitive answer is no and no. But it has it. um it has a Mary <laughs> River uh, salt in it, and it it is the hmm. best. 
You can also Sounds put good. in waffles or crab or pancakes, but also a nice bread. So. Yeah. Perfect. Just leaving that I'm out. hungry now. Yeah, me too. You're welcome. <laughs> well, I think we were about reached the end of another another episode. Thank you so much for joining us uh, Thank you. on the pod and uh, letting us get to know you a little bit. Absolutely. So. Thanks for inviting me. I had fun. Yeah. It Anytime. was our pleasure. Thanks for being with us. Uh, thank you, Jess. Thank you, everybody. And we see you all next week. Bye. Bye. <laughs>